Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the Spirit of the Lord is mighty already in this house. Would you stand with me for the reading of the word of the Lord? Praise God. Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah 61. While you're turning there, Sister Harris, good to have you all. Would you leave a word of testimony this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, we're glad the Harris family has made the trip to be with us today, aren't we? Praise God. Praise God. I want to let you know something special. I mean, all of these individuals, elders, and all of you in the pew. I'm talking about people just not directly, you know, sign the docket member of the church type of thing. These people were instrumental when I was in the hospital, along with people like Brother Garland and Brother Harper came and saw and prayed and messaged and helped. And I'm thankful for Brother Harris. Yeah. I'm thankful for Sister Smith. I'm yeah. thankful for our elders and all of you. Don't get me wrong, but there's, there's some folks that had schedules they didn't have to do. Yeah. And I'm thankful to these friends, men and women of God, and family. Praise God. Why don't we just give God thanks for the family yeah. of God? Brother Travis, it's good to see you here today, buddy. I love you. God's going to do something for you today, buddy. I feel it right now as I'm looking at you. Shut up, Psalm 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord in the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn. And finally, verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness. And the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. You want to say the Spirit of the Lord, the of the Lord is upon this place. Upon this place. And because of, that, because of that, I'll never be the same again. Never be the same again. With that in mind, as we head into our 11 o'clock, I want to preach to you right now. The devil can't stop it. And God's going to do it. My message here this morning is the devil can't stop it. And God's going to do it. If you believe that, why don't you take 60 seconds, lift your voice, and let God know and all hell know I believe it. seated. I want to build your faith today to let you know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you if one can put a thousand to flight and two can put ten thousand to flight. How many can we put to flight in this building here this morning? If you believe we're a bunch of wild eyed Come on. 
come on. We got the power of David's slingshot. We got the power of Peter's shadow. We got Samson's strength. Come on, somebody. We got the same anointing that Paul had, that Peter had. There's resurrection power that is in this house, that is in this room. There is restorative power in this house and in this room. There are miracles that you don't even see, but they're floating through the room right now, waiting on somebody. There's miracles in this room. They're floating. There's promises in this There's promises that prior pastors have prayed over some of you. And they're floating through the room. And God said, today's the day. Somebody just got it. You got to grab a hold of it and say, every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Why don't we take a time out right now for a shout? Jesus in me. Ain't no devil in hell gonna walk on this church. Ain't no devil in hell gonna steal victory from this church or from the people of God because we are covered in the blood. We are people of the name. We are people that have been covered by the blood of Jesus. If you're covered in the blood, why don't you act like you're covered in the blood? Build your faith a little bit. I was youth pastor, Brother Harris, in Kaiser, West Virginia, Sister Miller. You remember that? I was youth pastor for a long time down there. A real long time. I don't know they'd let me now because now I'm getting too old. I'll be, I'm not old, but I'll be, I'm almost, I'll be almost 40. When you hit 40, I don't, I don't know if anything happens when you hit 40 or not. But like I'll hit 40 in about a week. So, but right now I'm still steadily holding it 39. A very young 39. <laughs> While we were there, I wanted to teach our young people about intercessory prayer. And I said, we're going to have a night. I'm going to teach you and we're going to go into intercession. So one of the young people, Sister Amber, there's none of the Ambers that go here because she, you know, she's not here. Don't try to figure it out. <laughs> she said, Brother Crates, I'm in a dilemma. I said, what is it? She said, well, I got a friend that I think's into that wicked stuff. And she told me that if I would come and learn her chanting, that maybe she'd come to church one time. I said, let me tell you what to do. I said, you tell her. Now, you ain't do something like this if you feel the Holy Ghost. I said, you tell her it's a deal. But first thing, you come to my chanting class first. Amen. I just felt something. She said, I told her. So Friday night, we get there, and Hannah is her name. She walks in decked out in black. She sits there on the second row. And we begin to talk about intercessory prayer. It was just me, my wife, and about 25 or so teenagers. And we get to talking, and we get to repenting, and I noticed something happening with Hannah. Something moving on Hannah that she ain't never felt. Tears are starting to get in Hannah's eyes. And we kept on praying, and I said, now we've repented. Stand up where you're at, lift your hands, begin to praise the Lord. Because we're going to talk in tongues. And then as we praise the Lord, we're going to let that merge into a burden. And that's how we're going to start praying in tongues. But before you start praying in tongues, you've got to be talking in tongues. That's right. That's right. Preach. Okay? 
So I said, we're going to begin to praise the Lord till we're talking in tongues. And then when we're good and talking in tongues, praise it. And then I want you to think about your lost family in your school. And as you do that, and as your tongues mix with a burden, you'll begin to pray in intercessory prayer. Amen. And so we stood up. And they began to praise the Lord, and I noticed a commotion happening on the far right side of where we were. And by the time I got over there, Hannah had already been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She was speaking in other tongues. Those devils had to flee. What I'm telling you, folks, come on, come on. I know a God. His name of the river is Jesus. And he is greater than any principality, than any power, than any devil. He is greater than the forces of the enemy. Come on, I'm telling you, he is anointing me to preach the gospel. And God's going to do it here today. The devil can't stop it, and God's going to do it. You'll hear more about this next service because we captured a little something for you. Two days ago, Sister Smith and I crisscrossed, my God of heaven, all day. Mm -hmm. We weren't just crisscrossing because we didn't have nothing to do. We were praying for you in this church. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We went to individual towns. We went where the interstate had disrupted an Indian burial ground. And if you do your study, you'll find that the majority of the deaths have been between just a few mile markers. When we started to climb Mount Davis, I won't even tell you right now, but it was a physical manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And the Spirit of God spoke on the top of that mountain. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we decided, all right, next up, we're going to go to Hoy Crest, highest point in Garrett County on Backbone Mountain. And at, about halfway up, I realized, Lord Jesus, this has got to be you. Because yeah. Sister Smith has asthma. She's cancer survivor of pancreatic cancer, what takes it out of you. I just had traumatic brain surgery. And we get out thinking we just park and walk over just like it is at Mount Davis. It's a three-mile walk to the top of that mountain. I didn't know that. We just started walking. I'll oh, probably just around this next little turn. All right, well, it's probably just around this next little turn. And then we're sitting on rocks, or she's sitting on rocks. I, I told her, I said, I ain't sitting down. If I sit down, I ain't getting up. <laughs> Called my wife halfway up there, and she's like, what are you doing? <laughs> We're just, she told me, she said, you call your wife now, that way if she gets mad, she'll be better by the time we get home. She said, your wife's, she said, your wife's gonna kill me. I said, sis, it's all right, we didn't know. But I did know this, we're going up to the high places. So I'm going to tell you something. You think, well, that's crazy, Brother Christ. Your, your prayers do work. But I'm telling you, when you go to the high places, there are places there in the spirit. And I have learned yes. where heaven and hell both try to claim authority over regions. Right. And yeah. if I had an hour, I'd teach, you, I'd teach on it here a little bit. Well, we got to the top. I got to the top and called my wife. I said, we made it. And she said, oh, I just thought maybe he was calling and saying, now y'all were just rappelling down the mountain or something. <laughs> We got up there, declared the word of the Lord. I don't mean we just didn't declare the word of the Lord. I mean we declared the word of the Lord. Yes. And we did what we felt the Lord told us yes. to do and what people around this country, mighty people in prayer, people, people that move in the spirit like Brother Stone King said to do. And we did it. And remember, what, 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 what state was that over? I'm going to say Maryland. Maryland. How many knows that Cumberland hasn't had probably 20 people baptized in 10 years? Wow. Yesterday, they baptized 40 in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah.
good old witchcraft in that area. Yep. So we felt we're going up the mountain. And the Lord spoke to us. He said, I've seen your desire and your determination. He said, I'm about to open a door that no man can shut. He said, there will be signs and wonders and miracles. No man's going to be able to shut it. Folks, listen. I received the Holy Ghost in Cumberland. That city is special to me. That's where my grandmother grew. That's where my mom got the Holy Ghost. And in that city, yesterday, one day, after going to the high point, calling on the Lord and taking authority over some things, one day, and what you don't know is we had been inhibited. We had meant to get there before, and it just so happened we just got there the day before all this. We didn't even know that was going on. Yeah. But 24 hours later, <laughs> there was more people baptized in that city than there has been in the last 10 years combined. Yeah. If you don't think God's moving, come on, why don't we stand and give God a shout of praise? did a CT scan. She was having seizures. And they found that she had five brain tumors. Complete death sentence. The only hope there was at all is to let someone at the top cancer facility try to take a look at her. So even though it was dangerous, they, they put her on a plane said, get her to MD Anderson there in Houston, Houston, Texas. We prayed and interceded. We went into intercession again. Have you ever had that moment in intercession? You just feel something break. Just feel something. Something just broke. We didn't know until several hours later after we were all gone. 
They got her to MD Anderson, and they say, well, there must be something wrong with their CT machine up in Maryland. Because when we just redid it, all we see is a healthy brain. There's not even one to it. story from Brother Stone King. I can't talk like him. If I did, boy, would not be cool. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. I can't do it. But he's got a voice that just gets a hold of you. Billy Cole had a voice that would just get a hold of you. Too. He had a stare that would, get, that would either make you smile or scare you to death. Brother Stone King said one of my personal friends, Brother T.W. Barnes, he's a, he's a prophet of God among us. Remember this? Mm -hmm. You're going to shout. <laughs> he said, one day, a witch walked into my office. He said, Brother Barnes, I am here to curse you, your office, and this church. He said, I just sat there. And I said, go ahead. He said, she walked around, she cursed everything. And then she turned and looked at me. And she said, now I'm going to curse you, T.W. Barnes. I'm going to curse you with the inability to sleep, and you will die of exhaustion. I said, go ahead. He said, she stormed out. He said, I went on about my pastoral duties. He said, later that night, I went to bed. He said, in a couple hours, he said, something woke me up. He said, I could feel something in my room. He said, but I knew what it was. He said, and I knew where it came from. He's talking about authority and power. Yes. Okay? Listen for a minute. Power is that 18-wheeler that's going down the interstate. 80 mile an hour. Yeah. That's power. Authority is the red flash of light follower. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got power and we've got authority. just sat up on the edge of the bed and I said, devil, come here to me. He said, I know who you are and I know who sent you. He said, but I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to go back to the one that sent you. And I command you to do to her what she sent you to do to me. I'm getting ready to send it back. Discerners, 
because I'm just telling you, there's something on me. There's some stuff about to be sent back for where it yeah. came from. And it's going to come in for what it's sent. I got to get to the end of the story, though. Brother Barnes said, I rolled over and I went back to sleep. He said, a few hours later, I got a call. In the middle of the night, he said it was the witch. Then it was Pastor Barnes. Pastor Barnes, you gotta pray. You gotta get this thing off of me. By the authority of the word of God. In the power of the name of Jesus, I rebuke every foul spirit that has been sent against you to torment you. And I send it back to the witches and to the warlocks. I send it back to the ancient spirits from which they sent it. And I command you, I command you to do to them what they you to do to us. seconds to clear the building. Because the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me now. And I command every foul spirit, every unclean spirit, I command you to pick up your weapons and get out of this church. Get out of this place. We are going to get some of us up. We are going to get some of us Spirits of division. Spirits of jealousy. Spirits of greed.
somebody's faith. Not only are you going to receive yourself, but you're going to help somebody's faith. Did you have lupus? Did you diagnose with it? Yes, sir. Did they tell you there was no cure for it? Yes, sir. Okay. So there was no cure for it. They just said they could treat it, whatever the case is, but you'd never get rid of it. That's right. Now, his husband is, is you, you confirm what you want, not that I, you know. Because we're tired. Yeah. 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 So, did they confirm all that? Yes. Did you go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin to a general conference? Was Brother Tekla Merriam there, the, the, the uh, superintendent of Ethiopia? Yes, sir. And w was he like dancing all across the floor? Yes, sir. She came to the altar. I was there that night. Anytime I've been to Milwaukee. I wasn't there for the beer either. I was there for the new wine. I wanted the new wine. I'm going to tell you right now, there's too many people that I know talking in tongues that are liking pages on Facebook, Michelob and a bunch of stuff that you are not to be liking. Yeah. You need to get rid of it. You need to unlike it and stop letting people think you're fooling with that mess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go farther than that. Quit posting pictures of yourself, half-dressed, unholy, ungodly, and don't put pictures of your kids on there like that. You know what that altar looks like. But he stops in front of you, doesn't he? He says, who's she with? You said, I'm her husband. Yeah. What did he say? I told him, I said, she has lupus. And he said, I'm familiar with lupus. And, and he laid hands on her. Told me to pray with him. And he laid hands on her and she hit the roof. And she laid there, and of course, she began to speak in tongues I've never heard before. Go ahead. I know her tongues. I hear her tongues when we pray. I know. These tongues was never, I had never heard these tongues. Never. And he backed up and he looked at me and he said, Brother, she's speaking in my language, the Ethiopian language. Think of that. Who says tongues in real? She was speaking in fluent Ethiopian. There was such a mood of, of God, it was unbelievable. And I'm just standing there looking at her, you know, and I said, well, what's she saying? <laughs> yeah. I did. And he says, she's saying, it's all better now. It's all better now. It's all better now. It's all better now. Is. There's a 15-page report from she got back from General Conference that said we cannot find any trace of lupus anywhere in her body, and she hasn't had it since. Let's see. 
issues and they brought the Rado's family. So the results came back and there's still no it's, it's all gone. Because what God does, God does win. I said what God does. Thank you. You may be I want somebody in this church right now as I'm getting ready to close, Brother Sherwood, begin to play. I wonder God somebody would shout to the Lord right now.